Welcome to Not Your Dad's Math. I'm Mike, and today we'll be opening the box for a Digilent Basis 3 FPGA development board and trying out its built-in demo. This video is not sponsored. This package started its journey when I placed an order from DigiKey on a Tuesday afternoon. It was shipped via USPS for just a few dollars and departed Thief River Falls, Minnesota that evening. Just two days later, it was delivered in North Carolina in the well-padded packaging you see here. I've had similar experiences with DigiKey for other orders, always fast and accurate. Let's go ahead and open up our present. Here it is, the Digilent Basis 3. DigiKey packaged it in an anti-static bag, just like they do for any electrostatic sensitive device. The specs show that this board with its Arctic 7 FPGA will let you create many interesting and useful projects. I still feel surprise and delight by the amount of power you get from a board that's marketed for students and beginners. Indeed, this is your portal to the Vivado Design Suite. Inside the box, we find a cheerful greeting and some anti-static foam padding. Let's take a close look at this board. On the back side, notice the large, non-slip feet. These provide plenty of clearance for components and hold the board in place. The PCB and assembly work look really clean. Let's take a look at the I.O. ports. Along the top edge we have a VGA port, a USB micro B port for UART, and a USB A port for connecting a keyboard or mouse. Along each side edge we have a pair of 12-pin PMOD ports that provide power and 8 bits of general purpose I.O. Along the bottom of the board, we also have 16 toggle switches and 16 green LEDs, each individually addressable by the FPGA. In the middle of the board, we have 5 push buttons and a 4-digit common cathode 7-segment display. Let's power up the board and check out its built-in demo. The board can be powered through the USB micro B port or with a 4.5 to 5.5 volt supply connected to a 2-pin header. When we switch it on, the seven segment display cycles through the decimal digits. The push buttons turn off digits while pressed. Each toggle switch controls its adjacent LED. Finally, the program button reloads the bitstream stored in flash memory and asserts the internal reset signal. Next, we'll take a look at the VGA output. Photosensitive content appears for this test. Please take care to skip ahead if you have a sensitivity. I've connected the board's VGA output to an analog video capture card. The FPGA is generating a 4-bit per pixel RGB pattern in 1280 by 1024 resolution at 60 Hz. Let's move on to the UART. Here, the board is connected to my PC through its USB micro B port. In Windows, when the board is powered on, you can find its assigned serial port name by expanding the device manager's ports listing. We see that it is called USB Serial Port, and I can verify that the device's manufacturer is FTDI. On the Port Settings tab, click the Advanced button to assign a COM port number that Windows will reuse whenever this device is connected. Next, we'll connect to the UART using PuTTY, a Windows Classic. We'll start by configuring a serial connection to the COM9 port, keeping the default 9600 baud connection speed. In the connection serial settings, we'll make sure to have 8 data bits, 1 stop bit, no parity, and flow control set to none. Back in the session settings, we can now save this session configuration as basis 3. Now we can open the connection by double clicking the name. And here's our putty terminal. If I type into it, the FPGA does not echo back any characters. However, if I click the center push button on the basis board, we receive Basis 3 GPIO UART Demo in the terminal. For each of the four directional push buttons, we receive Button Press Detected in the terminal. For a little more interesting approach, let's connect to the UART with Python. We'll start by creating a Python virtual environment where we can install dependencies. After activating the environment, we'll install the PySerial library. In the Python REPL, we'll import PySerial. Then, we'll create a connection to the serial port on COM9. In an infinite loop, we'll decode the bytes received as UTF-8 text and print them to the console. Now you can see that push button presses send the same messages we saw in PuTTY. 
The extra white space comes from carriage return characters that are displayed differently in the Python console. Next, we'll connect to the UART with Node. We'll start by initializing a package.json file. Then, we'll install the serial port library. In the Node REPL, we'll import the serial port and read line parser classes from the serial port library. We'll create a connection to the serial port with a path of COM9 and a baud rate of 9600. The serial port instance implements Node's stream API. We'll pipe its output through a read line parser to create a reader. Finally, we'll wire the reader's data event to the console. Once again, the FPGA sends messages when its push buttons are pressed. And that concludes the demo. A special thanks and shout out goes to the author of the VCS software used for displaying the VGA output in this demo. VCS is great for debugging video signals for the Datapath Vision RGB card. Forgive my poor finish in saying that it comes from Tarpexi Huve Soft with a link in the description. Videos for help with Finnish pronunciation also appear in the description. Thanks for watching. I'm Mike, and this has been Not Your Dad's Math.